Hello, hello, Bob is in the house, and today we are reacting to, not reacting, no. You know, this is already my, you know, catchphrase, kind of, like I used to say it a lot. But today we are reacting to, no. Today is not a reaction video. Today, in fact, we are just celebrating that I finally hit my thousand subscribers um, mark in YouTube. Uh, really happy that it happened. Thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, to my channel. I'm hoping that you know that you guys are enjoying my content, uh, my videos, and I'm really just happy that uh, Damn, like it's just unbelievable that there's like thousand people Decided to click the subscribe button because they like me enough to do that and it's just Wow, it's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, what else I want to say? <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> We have questions uh, that people ask. There wasn't a uh, ton, and it wasn't expected at this point because I don't have a lot of following. Uh, but um, still, uh, the questions I gather, uh, I'm gonna answer to that, and also we're just gonna have a nice little talk, and I will just tell you who who is this guy, basically, you know, uh, from where I'm coming from, and also my past experiences. Uh, and of course, even though I cannot cover my whole life, like what happened before, like all the details, at least some of it, you know, some basic information about me you will know and hopefully just will help you to discover me better because I really want to open up myself to people who, you know, care, at least who are here uh, for my videos. So, Bob is in the house. My full name is Babur. Rustamov. Let's begin. That's right. Babur. Bob. Babur. <laughs> but basically, uh, Babur, B-O-B-U-R. The first three letters are, you know, B-O-B, -B, so Bob. Uh, and uh, that's my name, kind of, uh, nickname in America. Uh, when I arrived in 2014, I was using it uh, to you know introduce myself to people I was saying hey my name is Bob and then uh, of course they knew that I'm you know my my uh, accent is still over there so um, they knew that I'm not fully American um, so they would they would ask who where are you from and uh, I would say them I'm from Uzbekistan and it was like where is that? <laughs> Where's this country? And uh, it's a third world country. It's in Asia, and it's not developed at all. You know, like it's it's a third world country. What can you say else? But the country is still pretty nice. Uh, I had a lot of good moments uh, over there. A lot of <laughs> I made a lot of friends as well. You know, it wasn't always easy, of course, but. Come on, like, <laughs> who has an easy life? <laughs> I'm just uh, glad, you know, I, that I was uh, always given uh, a good life. You know, there were opportunities always open for me. And uh, yeah, another opportunity was to uh, move from Uzbekistan into the United States. Uh, we won green card. Uh, we moved in 2013 when I was, oh, in 2014, in summer. We won green card in 2013. I'm here for three years now. Uh, I was 16 at the time. Uh, I'm turn I turned 20 uh, just like 10 days ago, like around 10 days ago, um, September 26. 26 <laughs> is my birthday. I turned 20. When I was four years old, uh, I was listening to a lot of music from uh, MTV, music television. I was watching uh, TV. Uh, pretty often and then uh, I would listen to pop songs of the time like uh, uh, hits right uh, and then uh, I remember how I was watching Eminem <laughs> videos uh, at that time uh, when Eminem was very huge and like uh, popping everywhere uh, I remember like how my dad and I <laughs> were listening uh, to Eminem tracks or 50 Cent, like uh, really like popular uh, hip hop artists at that time uh, on the car. I know like <laughs> what you're thinking that, uh, hey, like your, your dad is showing you explicit, you know, songs with bad words in it, like uh, it, that's like very young age. But at that time, you know, we didn't really, at first we didn't know English. And we just like the sound, you know. My dad even 
didn't know what the guys were saying in the in the tracks so that's why we were listening to grooving to you know and uh, i was uh, of course listening to pop songs as well but that's why still uh, my two favorite genres of music is uh, pop music and hip-hop music and so uh, my mom <laughs> My mom was like, was always, uh, you know, she was always surprised why uh, this kid uh, can rap so well with Eminem, like how he, without even like knowing his own language well, <laughs> at four years old, can like kind of repeat uh, after Eminem and uh, uh, like, you know, when Eminem was rapping fast, but I was just so into him and uh, he's still my favorite artist really uh, Eminem is my favorite artist and also uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, one of the questions answered right there uh, who is your favorite artist is Eminem uh, and next is uh, Kanye West Eminem and Kanye West are very influential for me uh, in my music taste um, I can talk about them like <laughs> uh, like for hours you know <laughs> it's like um, really my passion and I, at this point, I have developed a lot of uh, one, uh, favorite artists. You know, I have a bunch of favorite artists at this point. But Eminem and Kanye West uh, will still be at the top of everyone. Although I, I would pop, I would like put David Guetta over there as well because they, and Justin Timberlake. <laughs> well, you see, it's like it's still coming. Like, but yeah, Eminem and Kanye West. Damn, this is not easy. <laughs> This is not easy to talk about it yourself. It's like I'm always like doing uh uh pausing, like cutting. It's like crazy. I didn't know that it's gonna be so hard to record. But anyway, so uh, we stopped on the uh, when I was four years old. Uh, the point with the Eminem though, I'm not a, I'm not a rapper at all. But I was just like uh, I have ears. You know, I feel like I have a good taste. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm very proud of my taste, at least in music. And with those ears, I can get, uh, follow uh, the patterns, you know. Uh, and um, I was uh, kind of saying uh, similar stuff to Eminem, but not quite, you know. I was just repeating what he's saying. Uh, and... Um, even though I didn't know what he was rapping about uh, and English was still not uh, fluent at that time. It's still not fluent, as you can see. But it's, it's t at that time, it was even worse. So I didn't really know what he was saying, but I would, all I would do is just like sing something similar, you know, uh, as probably uh, many of us do when uh, listen to uh, another language songs, you know. For example, if you're a Latino guy or a girl, and you listen to American songs, you don't really know uh, what they're saying, talking about. You just <laughs> you usually sing nonsense, you know, like uh, as I used to do, and I sometimes still do. So uh, it's okay. We have we've all been there, but you know, for some reason, uh, not everyone can kind of follow Eminem's or like rap um, songs, you know, like. Blah, 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 but I, I can. I, I can twist my tongue. I'm a good kisser, by the way. <laughs> so time was going on and uh, music was there in my life and movies it was also you know from Hollywood movies and this all good stuff was happening in America you know we were watching and like I was kind of started to dream to hey one day let's go to America you know like it's everything fun happens over there and so we did uh, when I was eight years old, I went to, in 2005, I went to um, New York first, and then we, visit, we visited uh, America for a whole month uh, as tourists, and uh, we saw a Statue of Liberty, we were living in New York just a little bit, and then we also were in Hollywood, Los Angeles, but mostly we were staying in um, Oregon State, and the city was Portland, uh, it's my dad's... Um, you know, my dad has a friend over there, and my dad used to have a business over there as well. So, uh, yeah, that's why we were staying in Portland most of the time, which was awesome. Uh, very, you know, great memories over there as well. I'm not going to mention about my life in Uzbekistan at all. Uh, all I'm going to say is just I was uh, learning 
uh, English from I think six or seven years old. I always had tutors coming at me. So when uh, it was time to go to the United States, there was no problem with the language. I'm not entirely sure uh, from which exact countries um, my watchers are, my viewers are. Uh, but I'm just going to mention that I have visited countries like, uh, except from US, of course, uh, Turkey, uh, China, uh, Russia, what else, uh, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, uh, Spain, Italy. Um, I went to Barcelona, by the way, <laughs> my favorite club. Uh, my Another passion is uh, soccer. Uh, so I, I'm watching soccer from 2008, so it's been like nine years uh, being a fan of Barca, so, you know, uh, I know <laughs> a lot of good stuff about soccer. Uh, hit me up, by the way, if you want to talk <laughs> about soccer. <laughs> but uh, also, um, yeah, that was another my dream, to visit Barcelona, and uh, I'm so glad that, you know, my parents have the abilities to uh, give me give us their children. Uh, I have my sister and uh, little brother. They're younger than me. Uh, my sister is 17. My uh, brother is 8. In fact, he's sleeping right now over here. <laughs> yeah, we were visiting countries uh, as tourists. What else we have? Uh, Dubai. Uh, huh. There were... I have visited 10 or 11 countries. Uh, I can't really remember. <laughs> but uh, those countries I have mentioned, uh, if if you are, you know, from one of these countries, please let me know in the comments. That would have been great, awesome. You know, I just love traveling and uh, it's it would have been quite impressive to see that, you know, from those countries someone is watching. That would have been amazing. And also, uh, I know one uh, person uh, we have, have contacted before. Uh, he used to comment a lot <laughs> before in my videos, uh, and uh, he's from Turkey. So it was just nice to um, talk someone from Turkey discovering my videos. You know, it's just fantastic how the world works right now. So the time was passing by, and we like were traveling a lot, but we always dreamt, dreamt, dream. We were, we were always dreaming. <laughs> to uh, you know move to United States because uh, we have seen the opportunities the life over here and it was good you know so we really wanted to uh, move to United States although Uzbekistan is not the worst country in the world you know there is just not much you can do over there so uh, again I'm not gonna bring up any politics and stuff like that but uh, it's just a third world country let's put it that way and we moved to United States. We like it was very. Um, it was not easy in terms of like what city to choose at all, and we chose uh, at the end. We chose San Diego when we haven't been in San Diego. We've never been in San Diego ever. We were just like <laughs> searching from the internet and like, okay, I think um, people are saying this is a good city, and it is a very nice city. I. I enjoy living here now, but at that time it was just crazy because uh, we have been in the United States at this point like um, four times. So 2014, we've already been like in 2005, 2008, you know, other cities like Orlando we visited, like Harry Potter, uh, like uh, the attractions, you know, um, in Orlando, the Universal Studios thing. Uh, and also in other cities in 2011, we have been here as well. But we have never been in San Diego, so it was just crazy for us to choose San Diego, in my opinion. I was like, Mom, why? <laughs> but then uh, we came here, and at first we didn't like it at all, because it doesn't it doesn't look like a big city. You know, like, it's not a city like New York, like over here, or like uh, Los Angeles, or, uh, you know, just like uh, cities in other, in other countries where it's like all, like... Uh, there's a lot of people going on, a lot of noises, you know, like it's not London or uh, not even like Amsterdam, stuff like that. So, uh, and even like in, in my country, uh, we were living in capital in Tashkent, 
and so uh, there were like high buildings it was still like a city like urban you know feel like uh, the feel of the big city but uh, here we came to San Diego it felt like a village really it was like uh, everyone is just so silent like at the, at the first days like we like it was summertime and summertime in San Diego for some reason like summer uh, San Diego is just like become becomes a little bit empty like there is not that much cars uh, everyone I think is just like going to vacations to another places so uh, although <laughs> San Diego is pretty much a uh, place to visit to uh, if you want to have a rest we have a nice beaches and uh yeah both both <laughs> we have <laughs> if you know what i mean i'm just kidding i i respect women and um i really not a fat boy or stuff like that i really loyal because i'm also uh, i'm not gonna should i express my religion well google uzbekistan and you know what my religion is but it's just like the attitude is not there, you know, like in terms of like partying, like having a lot of girls and it's not about our life. In there, we have strict rules, you know, like and girls cannot act like that for sure. <laughs> All right, I think it's time to see some questions. I mean, I have only basically two questions uh, from people over here and the first one is, uh, uh, from Chicken Nerds. I promise that I, I will give a shout out to those who will uh, ask me anything and uh, this uh, this person, Chicken Nerds, uh, thank you so much. Five questions and it's amazing. Uh, so the first is who is your favorite artist and I already uh, answered that is Eminem and Kanye West. Uh, I, I've seen this uh, before and so I was trying to cover uh in the full like detailed explanations of uh, my answers to all of these questions uh which country do you live i live in america as we talked about uh san diego to be exact in california uh how old am i 20 20 years old just uh fresh 20 years old man. uh real name babur b-o-b-u-r um, I have a sexy name, actually, I should say. <laughs> really, for example, uh, my mom calls me Babur because that's the way you say it in Uzbek language. I'm fluent in Uzbek, Russian, because Uzbekistan was uh, in USSR. Uh, Russians say my name like Babur, Babur, like that. Привет, Babur. <laughs> something like that uh, uh, Uzbek way is Babur uh, American way is like Babur like R Babur yeah you know but uh, my ex-girlfriend used to call me she was um, uh, half Palestinian half uh, white uh, well white is American but uh, she also had Italian uh, her mom had Italian roots uh, and she was like uh, Babur Babur, you know, like when when she was teasing me, like Babur, like you know, sexy. So I feel like it's a pretty, pretty sexy name, pretty um, diverse. You know, you can change it the way you want, and uh, I change it also into Bob, as you see. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty interesting name I have, uh, and favorite song of all time. <laughs> um, I don't think I have one and it's very hard. Uh, I have listened to so many songs over the years. It's just hard to like just mention one, you know, just if I want to mention like what songs I like, it would be like 100 or 200 songs for sure. Because like from all times, from every year, I have my own favorites and just, uh, you know, favorite artists as well, and uh, it's growing, it's getting more and more. But um, from top of my head, huh, I would say like Eminem's uh, Lose Yourself, uh, Rap God, Without Me, probably, you know, three tracks. I would mention from Eminem, from Kanye, I would mention <laughs> so many tracks that man, like, I. Even Kanye West's discography, I, I feel like 
uh, I catch myself recently with the thought that I love Kanye West music more even than Eminem's, even though I, I, cl I always claim that Eminem is my favorite artist because he brought me into rap, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of white people, for example, a lot of people internationally who are just not African Americans, they didn't know about rap much, and it's all changed because of Eminem. That's why I so I respect him that much. Uh, but you know, like uh, it's not always when I can put Eminem song and I enjoy it. Uh, because first of all, they all got, got old, kind of. You know, uh, time goes by. There is not much releases from this man over there. But uh, it's just hard to, you know, be enthusiastic over the songs. But Kanye West's discography, like any time you play it, any any album. Graduation, 808, My Beautiful Dark, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, well, well, College Dropout, maybe not that much for me, but uh, even though it's a classic and everyone claims, um, you know, that influential, that album was uh, most influential, influential from Kanye's discography. Uh, that's the one kind of the oldest one from 2004, and I came. Uh, into the, that album in only in 2013 to listen to like hey like what's this first project from Kanye was and uh, I didn't really enjoy it that much but late registration as well and even Yeezus uh, like even though I was like in 2013 I, I went excited to the album and I was listening to Yeezus and it's like what is this? <laughs> what is this? And so it was so different. Every album of Kanye is different, and his like mind is so crazy and great. Like his vision for art is crazy, you know. And uh, he's so influential, and uh, he always brings in into the game something new, and then everyone starts to follow it. Uh, as for example, in two thousand eight, he uh, when he released eight oh eight and heartbreaks. Um, he was the first singing rapper and that opened the door for many other artists including Drake so and also in 2013 Jesus when he came out nobody understood no not well, nobody but some people understand it but mostly it was this word disappointment like what is this and you li when you listen to it it's still like what is happening over here but uh, now I, I I mean I went to Jesus a lot more uh, back in 2014, 2015, to just try to understand what was going on. And, you know, finally, like, there were songs that I was enjoying. And uh, now, like, as you see, a lot of rappers try to repeat that sound, which is crazy, in my opinion. Who do we have also? We have uh, David Guetta. Oh, my gosh. David Guetta is one of my... No, David Guetta is my favorite DJ. Yeah. David Guetta is my favorite DJ. Uh, from 2007, I listen to him all the time they're like hits after hits just like fire after fire like releasing songs non-stop like non-stop club bangers and uh global hits uh he's not that huge these days in my opinion he was like in 2010s like 11 12 you know uh, he was very huge. A lot of good tracks with Lysia, Titanium, uh, or with uh, Ludacris, Little Bad Girl, with a lot of artists like Will I Am, uh, JCJ, like, damn, so many. Usher, Nicki Minaj, uh, one of my tracks with Aiken, Sexy Bitch. <laughs> it's just so fun, too. <laughs> and uh, Memories with Kit Cudi, you know, so list goes on and on and we also had a producer with the name of Timberland which was also amazing at the time now he's not that around like I mean he's still doing his thing but uh, he's not like on the charts by his own songs you know before it was it used to be like Timberland featuring Nelly Furtado promiscuous right or say it right when Nelly Furtado was popping and I used to love them for Tado as well, but now it's it's a decline, you know, of their career. They are not that popular anymore as they would used to. But I was just enjoying so much uh, with Timbaland, Nelly Furtado, and Justin Timberlake. That trio was 
uh, freaking fire, like dope. <laughs> I would also say Justin Timberlake's What Goes Around Comes Around track for me. I love that track. Oh, it's just, you know, like, <laughs> if, it's just better not to ask what's my favorite song. It's just so crazy because, like, I will, I will keep mentioning it's like, uh, Pharrell Williams, Get Lucky, uh, Pharrell Williams, Happy, and Pharrell Williams, uh, Daft Punk, of course, it was there, um, uh, and Get Lucky song, you know, the hits for me, or Major Lazer's Lean On, in 2015 was also a great track for me. Uh, See You Again with Khalifa, Charlie Puth, for sure. You know, it's just so, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, great songs. Michael Jackson, how he, can we forget about Michael? You know, Billy Jean, uh, Dirty Diana, uh, Thriller, Beat It, and like so on, so on. You know, Earth Song, <laughs> The Weeknd. <laughs> The weekend <laughs> earned it. I feel it coming. Starboy, heels, uh, can feel my face, uh, so on, so on. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> I'll stop. Yeah. Another question was uh, a hey, another Avicii reaction. Yeah, that was from Avicii reactions. Common. Yo, Bob, who are your top three music producers, DJs? Okay, so I mentioned Timbaland, but it's been five or six years uh, that Timbaland is not uh, around uh, as in the way he used to be. So he's kind of, he, he's on decline for a long time now, probably. At this point, it's better not to mention Timberland, you know, because there are so many artists and mu musicians I'm listening right now uh, that are, you know, and they are still relevant to me. Uh, so I will choose one of them. Uh, and so first, uh, I will mention. Uh, I already mentioned David Guetta. I will mention still him because uh, yes, I have been listening to David Guetta from 2007 and by this time like I have almost like 100 songs where uh, by, only by him where I can go and listen to and still enjoy the fuck out of this man's music you know and the second one the second DJ uh, will go to Kelly Harris Kelly Harris right there Kelly Harris uh, I discovered him uh, from the song I'm not alone in 2009 uh, you know, like uh, the, when he had an album, uh, Flashback, I think, ready for the, f um, I don't remember the name, but yeah, the Flashback track was there as well, and, and like uh, I'm Not Alone, and then he was, he dropped tracks like Sweet Nothing, uh, the We Found Love with Rihanna, the, the, the album was called 18 Months, and there was so many tracks, popular tracks, that made Kelly Harris into like, huge uh, DJ out there you know everyone at this point knows uh, who Cal Harris is and uh, still he is relevant at this uh, you know uh, in this game of pop music of pop mainstream music he's still relevant he still uh, makes hits you know if he makes a song it's on the radio uh, so I enjoy his songs as well there is like two albums straight five three albums now with funk wave bounces volume one uh, that I truly enjoy, 80 months, motion, funk wave bounces, and pretty much almost every track is a hit, you know, everyone knows his tracks, so definitely, definitely. And the third one is kind of very risky, not risky, but the third one I'm not really sure whom to um, say, I, I would say Adichie, but it's like there's so many artists that I enjoy, like DJ Snake, for example. I feel like DJ Snake is the closest for being number three to me because um, throughout this last three or four years, he brought a lot of great songs. First, we have Lean On, right? Uh, collaboration with Major Lazer, Lean On. We have song Middle. We have song You Know You Like It. 
if I play, if you don't know by the name, if I play, you sure know what songs I am talking about. Well, turn down for what? Get low, oh yes, get low, Fast and Furious Seven. Uh, I gotta say, I'm a fan of Fast and Furious. Um, Eightology, <laughs> well, eight movies. But at this point, uh, yeah, I I feel you. <laughs> After Furious Seven, there should have not been eight. Although they made a great job, they did a great job. Still connecting uh, points, you know, from older movies. You know, still made relevant movie. Uh, but it was just a perfect ending with Paul Walker's death and. Uh, you know, they close it out beautifully. Uh, but uh, I'm still glad that they're doing another ones because I just, Fast and Furious is just the movie of your life, you know, like it, it always have been there. Cars, girls, guns, you know, family, family is the most one. Family, loyalty, you know, being humble and just treat your uh, best friends, uh, your family, the greatest way possible that's what i stand for as well because it's just it's vital it's the most important thing in the life other movies i like if you're interested um harry potter yeah and talk about series at this point like uh, uh, not only one part but where there are a lot of parts harry potter fast and furious lord of the rings hobbit yeah stuff like that yeah i like it <laughs> i love comedies as well love to laugh and in my own spare time I usually listen to uh, usually watch comedy shows uh, yeah that's what I do uh, also from this year since I'm doing YouTube uh, my channel uh, started in February 3rd of 2017 uh, and uh, I'm watching other channels now I wasn't that active on YouTube at all before but uh, I'm learning who uh, PewDiePie is, H3H3 Productions, and like people like Jake Paul and Superwoman, you know, Liza Koshi. Uh, yeah, famous uh, YouTubers. I'm learning them only now because, uh, you know, before um, I used to have like, I mean, I still have those channels, but I had only like two or three channels I, uh, I always watched. Uh, in YouTube, but that's it, you know, I never really was interested in what's going on around the platform, what's happening, you know, and then there's like, you have to watch also for the ad sense, you know, um, money is issue. When I came in, <laughs> there's freaking money issue. It, it's all, only like when I, <laughs> when I'm coming, <laughs> there should be like that. Uh, well, uh, I still didn't earn anything from um, YouTube, uh, yes, I have some money on the balance, but uh, I gotta be honest, like I gather only around $40 from February till October. And you have seen there's like many views at this point, many subscribers as well, but a lot of views um, on my videos, uh, 215,000 views to be exact as of now. And still, you know, at this point, you would imagine, damn, probably there is some, so, some money this guy is earning, but no, zero. <laughs> My balance is like around $40 right now. And YouTube has a law that, you know, you got to get your first $100 and then we will give you this $100. And from that point, it's like monthly wage. Uh, I mean once in a month we will give you your money out so uh, I'm still waiting that uh, when you know I'll get that hundred first hundred dollars from YouTube like first my official salary you know that would be great but um, that's why I'm pushing kind of these videos like more and more not because uh, I'm not working uh, it's not about the money at all uh, let's make it clear I, s I have done like more than 200 videos at this point but i'm just enjoying the process i love the fact uh, that somebody is watching me i love filming these reactions just uh, having fun and like sharing my love to music to other people it's just freaking crazy uh really it's very really interesting and very really amazing to do these videos and uh like i'm 
not even like complaining about getting paid because I started this not because of getting paid, but because at that time I had a, a heartbreak uh, of like my ex-girlfriend, which I mentioned, uh, and I really needed that kind of positive attitude uh, to came, to come back into my life. My life, <laughs> and in front of the camera, you cannot be you know, negative and like share your pain to like your camera, especially when nobody gives a damn. <laughs> because like at this, at that point at least, um, I didn't have any views and subscribers and if you're only like shitting on people, it's like, it's not gonna work, you know? And people like to see, like people go to YouTube for entertainment. They wanna get something useful uh, sometimes, you know, there are uh, development, self-development channels or like yoga channels or like a lot of useful channels as well, but for the most part it's still entertainment. They want to be, they want to laugh, they want to have fun. So you got to bring that positiveness into the uh, YouTube. And so that's what I'm doing because I also need that positiveness into my life as well. Need it. Now it's I um, thank God I recovered myself from that state and uh, I'm really happy what's going on with my life. I'm really happy that thousand subscribers and all the attention, uh, comments, like I'm getting, uh, you know, new people, uh, I'm talking to new people, which is crazy as well, amazing. So that's the reason mostly I'm doing YouTube. But at the same time, there's like two schools happening at the same time i'm going to music school uh i really i'm my dream is to somehow get involved into the music industry you know maybe as a producer or like a music engineer sound engineer uh or stuff like that maybe as a singer but i doubt it <laughs> but yeah so i have music school i have um uh, college as well because my parents don't really trust this music school you know like my dream you went out there like uh, you you wanted to be a businessman like your dad but now you suddenly changed your mind and want to be a musician but it's so shaky because like you gotta have talent you don't know anything but they uh, it's their thoughts of, uh, I mean they don't give out that negativeness they are very supportive parents uh, thank God and like they're very, they always have been there. They always been understanding and that's why they're you know paying for this music school for me because they believe in me, but they're just they want to say like they are just saying that you know still <laughs> son, can you please go to this college as well to get regular like usual diploma that <laughs> which normal people <laughs> do you know like get uh, just in case that it's not gonna like with music school, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna work So um, with the music industry. So that's why I'm here and there and a uh, lot of like homeworks, assignments and like uh, things I gotta do. And also YouTube is not only about filming, it's about editing as well. You gotta edit the video, cut unnecessary parts and like, you know, it takes all time, especially albums, like four hours <laughs> of work, you know, you film, you listen to an album for an hour, for example, and then you sit there and you spend three or four hours uh, cutting the video and uh, make it uh, concise. So I'm pretty much, <laughs> I talk a lot, uh, as I love to do, <laughs> as you can see at this point. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for a thousand subscribers. Thank you for being with me. I hope that you didn't feel like it's a waste of time. I hope that it was interesting to listen to me. I hope you learned some things about me. There are more things to talk about, of course, but uh, I'm not going anywhere. So uh, YouTube is still <laughs> here. This platform is still available. So anytime, you know, uh, I will feel like making another video about myself or maybe it's going to happen in another uh, format. Uh, I'll definitely do that so uh, we can talk later as well <laughs> but uh yeah for now we'll keep going for 2,000 subscribers 5,000 subscribers and so on hopefully it's gonna uh, 
be faster this phase at this time because like from February to October only 1000 mm, eight months in already uh, Liza Koshi for example <laughs> she have 11 million subscribers <laughs> just that uh, around uh, the same time as I'm having this channel so that's crazy man uh, I'm just saying that hopefully we'll get a little bit faster uh, and I really love doing what I do so music reactions are on its way thank you guys for watching hit the like button if you like this video subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys in the next one пока хайр аньон Korean аньон I learned it Arrivederci, auf Wiedersehen, adios, amiuro, auriwa, hot office, goodbye. Ahora tengo la certeza que no se me han quitado las ganas de estar contigo en las mañanas.